This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 49, verse 24. And it reads, Shall the prey be taken from the mighty, or the lawful captive delivered? Question. Isaiah 49 and 25. But thus saith the Lord, Yahweh, even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away, and the prey of the terrible shall be delivered. For I will contend with him that contended with thee, and I will save thy children. Isaiah 51, 14, this is the point. The captive, exile, hasteneth that he may be loosed. That's us. Ultimately from these bodies, these chains of darkness. And that he should not die in the pit. This system that Esau, Edom, this self-proclaimed white man is preparing for the world. As fishes caught in a net or birds in a snare, so are men snared in an evil time. This is the time that we're living in. But oh, do we have the saving grace of Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shai. The name of the Father and Son is what you heard in the ancient Paleo Hebrew. And I will explain more in time. But let me read this scripture all the way through. The captive, which is us, exile, we're exiled from our land. The captive, exile, hasteneth that he may be loosed, that he should not die in the pit, which is a system nor that his bread should fail because we're coming into a time of famine, scarcity, perplexity, and distress of nations, if not already. We're coming into a time just as that of Joseph, where him through the spirit and power of the Lord sent him dreams or were the interpretation of dreams and sent the dream to Pharaoh. And Pharaoh knew through Joseph of a great famine that was about to take place. But before the famine, a time of great plenty. And through Joseph, he prepared Pharaoh and his nation. And then all surrounding nations would come up to get that grain that was stored in storehouses through the wisdom and knowledge of Joseph, who was set up in that kingdom that rose to the scepter of that kingdom. All right. Through the wisdom and power of Yahweh, our God, why Yahweh Shai, the angel of his presence that did not leave Joseph from when he was put into the pit to the time he was put into captivity, from the time he was wrongfully accused and put into the prison, from him being released to the prison and stepping into the palace. The Lord did not leave him for the saving grace of our power through his son was always there and will be there for us in these times. So with that, let's read on Isaiah 52 and 2. Shake thyself from the dust, which is confusion. Arise and sit down, O Jerusalem, which is a people before it's a place. You so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. Jerusalem representing a uh, city of peace. Yerushalayim, city of peace. All right, shalom, peace. Yera, okay, going into really uh, uh, to inform or to teach is a place that you will be informed and be taught of peace. It is peace. We have peace in our power. It's the city of peace. We are a people of peace, ultimately. We are the peacemakers. For the peacemakers shall see. <laughs> well, I got to get that. The Lord is willing I do. But that, that came to my mind real quickly. It said the, the, the pure of heart shall see God, Yahweh, Bashem Yahweh Shai, who is the, Yahweh Shai, who is the expressed image of the Father, Yahweh. All right? Shake thyself from the dust, confusion. Arise and sit down, O Jerusalem. Loose thyself from the bands of thy neck. O captive daughter of Zion, we've been freed and loosed by the coming of our Lord, Yahweh Shai, the light that now shines in our hearts, brighter than ever, the treasure that we have in these earthen vessels, and by the blood that bounds us to a covenant, a new covenant, which is the same covenant, May with the same people be yet based on better promises. By the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins, but by the precious blood of Mashiach, have we been freed? Have we been entered into a new covenant, a new agreement? And we shall shed these bodies once and for all and be loosed and be in a body like unto our Lord's glorious body. And with that, Giving all praises, glory and honor unto Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, 
Yahweh is the name of the heavenly father. Okay, let me say that again. Yahweh is the name of the heavenly father, the father of spirits, the most high, the almighty. And Yahweh Shai is the name of his only begotten son, his true and proper name, our Lord and our savior, the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Yahweh Shai is his name. And Hamashiach is his title, which means the anointed. Okay, he is a prince and a savior for to give it, for to give what? Repentance to Israel. <whistles> you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, and those of our seed scattered among the nations on their father's side that hear this word and resonates with their spirit. It doesn't matter what you look like, and it doesn't matter who your mother is. It's based on your father. And based on your spirit. And there is a particular spirit that the Lord alone has placed in his people that no other people have. And that they have a connection to our power that others do not have. That's why it says the exile, the captive exile, which we are, hasten it to be loosed. From what? Captivity, slavery. Servitude of those lesser than us. But with that, giving all praises, glory and honor unto Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh Shai, double honors unto my apostles and elders at Great Millstone of the Ruling Well that taught us this truth, me this truth, and brothers like me and you believers this truth, beginning with the most important things we could ever know, the two most important things we could ever know, the name of the Father and the name of His only begotten Son, their true and proper names in the ancient Paleo-Hebrew, our language, the Lashwan Kodash, which means holy tongue. Lashwan meaning tongue and Kodash meaning holy. Now these be the names that are written. The name of the Heavenly Father is Yahawa. Yah meaning He. Hawa meaning exists or is or is to be. He is. He exists. He the existing one, for he is a rewarder of them that diligently seeks him. And in the name of his only begotten son, a name that is above every name given amongst men here on earth to the Israelite man first, and also to the believer consisting of women, children, helps of the prophets and those that have faith, even the name, that mighty name that they will call upon in these last and troubling days, that doorway that shall connect them to the father, the living power. Even the name, that mighty name, the name Yahawashai. Yah, meaning he, Hawashai, meaning deliverer and savior. For that is exactly what he will come and do for the second time in physical form, yet as an angelic force. For we shall see him as he is, and we shall be like him. So, Lord's willing, this is an edifying lesson, and Lord's willing, I call this lesson their saving grace. Their saving grace. <laughs> and those when I get these scriptures that are that are read in the, uh, the modern translation, those when the blue letter up top, real quick, and then we're gonna go back to the commentary. But let me read this here: Isaiah sixty-one and one. The spirit of the Lord power is upon me, upon us all. First and foremost, the prophet Isaiah. It was upon him in measure, but upon the Savior. Our Savior, Yahweh Shai, he was without measure. So he is truly the one that the Spirit of the Lord was upon because the Lord have anointed him. That's in his title, HaMashiach, which you get Messiah. Ha meaning the, Mashiach meaning anointed. It says, the Lord Yahweh have anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. Yahweh Shai came to do that. And we were in a very poor state when he came on the scene. We were under the Romans. Majority of our nation was gone on the other side of the world. A small pocket of the north was left and the south had just fought all right, against the onslaught of the Greeks. And many of our people were disbanded and turned to idols and other gods and put under uh, other customs. But yet through lineage were Israelites. So it was a very troubling time for our people. But yet Yahweh Shai and the men that he set up came to preach good tidings unto the meek and liberty, freedom, salvation. It says, he has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. That's us. To proclaim liberty to the captives 
and the opening of the prisons to them that are bound. And that's us. We are bound in this place. It's a prison planet. But Babylon the Great, a.k.a. America, is a prison for our people. Whether you are in an actual prison or you're walking free, so to speak, you're still a prisoner. The prisoners inside have numbers and tags and names and identifications. And we outside have the same. Though they are behind bars, we are behind paperwork and borders and lines and things of that nature. But we will be loosed. All right. So in the times that are coming, these troubling times, the Lord will uh, uh, save. All right. To pray from the mighty and loose the captives. All right. From the bonds of death, as he did our forefathers of old, who have ever called upon the Lord and were confounded. None. So Lord is willing, let's let's begin there. We're gonna get um oh, oh, free indeed. We've been free uh, by Yahweh Shai. So let's get that free indeed. Okay. If the sun shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. Yep, John 8 and 36. If the sun, which is Yahweh Shai, therefore shall make you free, first in the spirit, then physically he's gonna make us free. If the Son, therefore, shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. We are free in our mind and our spirit. We're not shackled to this place anymore. We are free. But we are only waiting to be free physically, literally free, taken out of this land of captivity, out of this prison, and placed in a body like unto our Lord's glorious body. All right? Without further ado, let's go to um what I want to get. Bear with me, brothers. Oh, uh down in into the pit. But this is going into our forefathers, uh how they were delivered by wisdom. But let's get it. Now, this is Esau Eden. This is what he ultimately wants to do, but he's not going to be able to. All right. Ecclesiasticus 12 and 16. An enemy speaketh sweetly with his lips, but in his heart, his mind, he imagines how to throw thee into a pit. His system. A no way out of uh, situation, but we have through Yahweh Bashim Shai a doorway, a way out, an escape. It says he will weep with his eyes, but. If he find opportunity, he will not be satisfied with blood. Hence, Jacob's trouble. Many of our people are going to be slain. But even in that, will not this man be satisfied? That's why we need the saving grace of Yahweh. And that's what I wanted to get. That's exactly what I wanted to get. Saving grace. Saving grace. Saving grace. All right, but let's get that uh, uh, grace came by Mashiach. The law came by Moses. But grace and truth by Mashiach. By Yahweh Shai. Okay, that's what we needed more than anything because we can't keep our laws here like we want. We can't keep them, all right, like we would. We try, and the Lord is, is looking at us, okay, uh, uh, putting forth an effort. So He's going to uh, be with us, He's going to stand with us, He's going to fight for us. Is wisdom of Solomon 3 and 9. They that put their trust in him shall understand the truth. Woo! And such as be faithful in love shall abide with him. Boom, there you go. Through all these trials, we're going to abide with him. All right? For grace and mercy is to his saints. The saints ultimately are the Israelites. But the Lord is going to deal preferably with his elect. It says, all right, bear with me, brothers. All right, I'm back, brothers. Um, reading on, it says, For grace and mercy is to his saints, and he have care for his elect. There it is. That's the point. That's what we wanted to get. That's what we got. Praise the Lord. All right, now. Let's get, uh, be loosed. All right, let's see here. All right. Oh, yeah, they're captive. All right, so we're going to go back to those scriptures. But before we do, 
And I'm going to read this commentary on Jeremiah's release after Jerusalem was sacked and taken by how Jeremiah was favored in it all. So you shall be favored, those of you of the elect of Israel, Yahasha Allah, those that believe in the mighty name of Yahweh, that have not been duped to think, oh, God and Christ blessed or some other crap or to believe in your stupid leader that doesn't follow the Lord or thinks the Lord is regular. Like what the hell is going on? You must know the name of the father and son and believe and trust in them and be built up for these times by the true leaders that the Lord and his son have set up to give you knowledge and understanding, to make you ready to stand in the day of battle, to put on the whole armor of Yahweh so that you may stand against the wiles, which is the strategies and trickeries of the devil. The devil being the deceiver, the self-proclaimed white man, his people, and the power that have been given him on the left-hand side and that will be taken from him in time, a very short time. Okay, so let's go to, I already know where it is. I'm gonna go to the, the Apocrypha books and we're gonna go to, hmm, Okay, okay, Wisdom of Solomon 10. It's a beautiful chapter here. This is Wisdom of Solomon 10 and 1. She, which is going into the spirit of wisdom, which is the spirit of Mashiach, but is as a woman, because a woman is is beautiful. All right, change the uh, the beauty of a woman changes a man's countenance, just as wisdom making the man's face to shine. Right? A woman is a support, right? And a help meet. That's what wisdom is for, for those that are of a learning and understanding heart, mind, that have the fear of the Lord, because it says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge. You see, the Lord will grace you with wisdom, his spirit, the spirit of his son, the spirit that's in the word, the spirit that guides you into all truth, which the, <laughs> the Lord is truth. What is truth? All right, grace and, and truth came by Mashiach. Well, that's what I want to get. But before we do, I'm gonna read this first verse. Wisdom of Solomon 10. One, she preserved the first form father of the world, Adam, and was created alone, or that was created alone, and brought him out of his fall, you see, through the wisdom. Yes, though death fell upon all men through wisdom, men that are in this time that can actually die are quickly without care and do not fear death and do not fear anything because we trust in the one who gives and takes away life. Yahweh and even if we give up our life or lay down our life, the Lord is able to take it up again. Hence, we want to understand the power of his resurrection, even Mashiach. We speak of him crucified, rather him that is risen. And through his spirit, we are risen from dead works, trespasses and sins. Here we go. Call all him Yahweh because Wisdom brought Adam out of his fall because the last Adam, which is Mashiach, came as a quickening spirit. And through that wisdom, he was made alive, even though as Adam died, Mashiach died. But the difference is that he rose again and he can raise us from the dead if that be our lot. But many of us will not taste of death. As Yahweh Shai stated, you, there are some of you standing here that will not taste of death. So you see the kingdom of heaven come because we're finally literally going to die to all that we have ever known and become alive to that, which we only see in our dreams and our imaginations, things beyond belief. Okay. And gave him power to rule all things. Woo because what Yahweh Shai did, that same power he had at the beginning, that wisdom, the pure wisdom, the pure influence flowing from the throne of the Almighty is in him and will be with him forever. For he has power in heaven and in earth and the things under the earth. That he is the second most powerful entity in all that is, that he has been given everything of the Father. But he himself is subject to the Father, but yet under him everything is his for possession. Whew. And we shall be joint heirs with him, Lord's willing. That's why we love the saving grace of Yahweh Bashemel Shah. We do not look to man or human efforts to save us, but we look unto Yahweh, our power, Wa Yahweh Shai, our Savior, to do what cannot be done. All right. 
Do not tell me it cannot be done. That which is impossible with men is possible with Yahweh by Shemel Shai. Now let's get that uh, grace and truth. Should have popped up in the new in the New Testament. If it didn't come up, that's all right. There we go. All right, John one and seventeen. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. Woo! That's it. That's it. Call on him la. Colossians 1 and 6, which is come unto you, this word, as it is in all the world, and bringeth forth fruit as it doth also in you, since the day ye heard it, heard of it, woo, and knew the grace of Yahweh in truth. Woo, man. 2 John 1 and 3, grace be with you, mercy and peace from Yahweh the Father and from the Lord Yahweh Shai Mashiach, the Son of the Father, in truth and love. Woo now, we're going to get uh, into this lesson. We're going to keep reading the Wisdom of Solomon 10. But let's read this commentary on Jeremiah being freed from the prison. Go free the prophet Jeremiah, for he told of the coming right, of Nebuchadnezzar. All right, and his and his armies taking down Jerusalem, just as the men of of the Lord are telling you now that the onslaught of this new uh, king of Babylon. All right, the Edomites that are ruling this new Babylon, Babylon the Great, are going to come down upon our people with great wrath. Those that know not Yahweh Bashemasha will be put to the sword, or famine, or captivity, or death itself by whatever means. But those that trust in the Lord will He be a guide unto them. And a protection, and he will keep our children from seeing hell, which is the grave, death. So let us begin. Now, this is Matthew Henry's commentary on Jeremiah 39. And it says, Here we must sing of mercy, as in the former part of the chapter we sang of judgment, because judgment came upon Zedekiah, his uh, sons, uh, the, the bulk of Jerusalem, the fighting forces, the princes. Uh, the royals, the Levites, the priests, the people themselves. But yet Jeremiah at this very time was in the prison, was bound. But yet he was telling them the truth of the coming evil. Just as us, we might be bound in the prison. We might be, we, yeah, we will be apprehended. Some of us, not all. Others are going to be on the move as pilgrims. Michael's going to stand up for those that are written in the book. Others are going to be uh, graced with power. Others with healing abilities. Some of us are going to be taken uh, captive, shackled, put into uh, high security prisons. But yet we have uh, 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 we have beautiful, beautiful, beautiful acts of deliverance written down for us to look back to that of Peter being freed from the prison by the angels or the angel. We have Jeremiah being freed in this instance. We're going to go into and many others. The, the three holy children delivered from the fiery burning furnace. Daniel delivered from the lion's den and the mouth of lions. Others delivered from the sword. Others from armies of aliens. All right. Others from uh, the perishing of famine. So the Lord and his saving grace is beyond what we can even imagine. For he will far exceed. All right. Our expectations. Now, this is uh, reading on in the commentary. It says from the top, I'll read it here. We must sing of mercy as in the former part of the chapter. We sing of judgment and must sing unto Yahweh of both. We may observe here. Bullet point one, a gracious providence concerning Jeremiah. When Jerusalem was laid in ruins and all men's hearts failed them for fear, then might he lift up his head with comfort. I believe that's in Job when, uh, there's a, a falling down, then shalt thou say, there is lifting up. Whew. It says, know that his redemption drew it nigh, as Mashiach's followers when the second destruction of Jerusalem was hastening on in Luke 21, 28, going into the Romans coming down. He told them to flee to the mountains when you see the armies come past Jerusalem. The same for us. We're going to have to flee, not to the mountains, these other governments or countries. We're going to have to flee unto the Heal which cometh our help, Yahweh Bashemah Shai, in his name, which is a strong tower for us. The name of the Father and Son, 
that the righteous runneth into and are safe. And the Lord shall be a shield and buckler for us. And through his name also, when the enemy shall come in like a flood, the Lord is going to lift up a standard. Through his name shall we push down our enemies and tread them under that rise up against us. How about that? Call all yumla. Yahweh Bashim It says, knowing that his redemption drew, drew nigh as Mashiach's followers when the second destruction of Jerusalem was hastening on. Luke 21, 28. Nebuchadnezzar, or Nebuchadnezzar, however you want to say it, had given particular orders that care should be taken of him. And I, I believe that this is going to happen for the men of the Lord. That damn devil, Jacob Rothschild, is dead. So a lot of those old devils that really had the grand plan, so to speak, are going back to the spirit realm. But these uh, younger elites, they might just move in haste or whatever, or be so fearful and not know the true power of the men of the Lord that they'll have them in a good case. All right, with these men, take good care of them. You hurt them. You'll be hurt. I, I foresee that. Like I'm just speaking as a man, but we're gonna we're gonna experience what Jeremiah experienced, what Joseph experienced, being uh, going to the to the threshold of the palace. We're gonna be risen up in this society because the favor of the Lord is gonna be on us. Even though some of us are gonna be beheaded, even in the midst of that, we are gonna be very well taken care of because it is written, "Touch my touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm." Even in the midst of the torture, even in the midst of the torment, even in the midst of persecution, we will be in a good case. Remember that. All right. And understand that, that these evils are not for the elect. They're for the two thirds. And even if the elect, certain of the members find themselves in these situations, all will the Lord show who are his chosen in that time. He will show a clear difference between those he loves and those that are in his wrath because they did not accept and understand and believe and trust in the name of his only begotten son, nor the record that was given. Okay? So since they did not trust the record that was given, they shall be given over unto the sword, death and destruction. It reads on in the commentary up top, it says, Nebuchadnezzar had given particular orders to care, uh, orders that care should be taken of him, Jeremiah, and that he should be in all respects well used, verse 11 and 12. Now it's supposed to say Nebu Zar Adan, but it says Hebu, but it's Nebu Zar Zardan, all right, and the rest of the king of Babylon's princes observed these orders discharged him out of prison and did everything to make him easy. Verse 13 and 14. Now we may look upon this bullet point one as a very generous act of Nebuchadnezzar, who, though he was a haughty potentate, which is a haughty uh, ruler, yet took cognizance of this poor prophet. Doubtless he had received information concerning him from the deserters that he had foretold the king of Babylon's successes against Judah and other countries, that he had pressed his prince and people to submit to him, and that he had suffered very hard things for so doing. And in consideration of all this, though perhaps he might have heard also that he had foretold the destruction of Babylon at length, he gave him these extraordinary marks of his favor. Note, it is the character of a great soul to take notice of the services and sufferings of the meanest. It was honorably done of the king to give discharge even before the city was taken and of the captains to observe it even in the heat of action. And it is recorded for imitation because when this city is taken, these, uh, uh, um, these, these mercenaries and soldiers, or well, they're going to know of the men of the Lord. They're going to know of the apostles, elders, brothers. The world knows of us. Though we are looked at as nothing, we're poor, we're hated, we're despised. In that day, the Lord is going to show who are his. I'm telling you, he's going to show it. We have this here in writing of Jeremiah. When everybody else went captive and were taken, were slain or put down, Jeremiah was known and was taken care of. All right, it says, 
as a reproach to Zedekiah, which was the king, that wicked king of Judah, man. And it would like you wicked leaders of Israel now. You're like Zedekiah. You don't listen. So you're going to suffer a fate worse than death because you did not hear the cry of the former prophets, nor the prophets in your own time. It says as a reproach to Zedekiah and the princes of Israel, they put him in prison and the king of Babylon and his princes took him out. Yahweh's people and ministers have often found fairer and kinder usage among strangers and infidels than among those that call themselves of the holy city, Jerusalem. See, our people treat us worse than the heathen would because the heathen kind of know like, well, we know you're the Israelites. And then among you are prophets sent by the almighty and his son. And these men are even greater than the kings or those of the royal uh, uh, lineage or, or line. They're like these men are favored of the Lord. And his son, listen to them, fear them, be careful with them. As the scripture states, touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. Everybody knows of that writing of that scripture, particularly. So they're going to know, OK, if these men have spoken all these things and these things have happened, who take very good care of these men, of this man here. It says. Paul found more favor and justice with King Agrippa. Than with Ananias, the high priest. Bullet point three. As a performance of Yahweh's promise to Jeremiah in recompense for his services, I will cause the enemy to entreat thee well in the day of evil. And that's one of my favorite scriptures. And that's going to happen for us, brothers. Be sure of that. It says, this is chapter 15 and 11 in Jeremiah. So Jeremiah had been faithful to his trust as a prophet. And now Yahweh, Bashim Mashiach, proves himself faithful to him and the promise he had made him. Now he is comforted according to the time wherein he had been afflicted and sees thousands fall on each hand and himself safe. The false prophets fell by their, those judgments which they said should never come. Chapter 14 and 15 or chapter 14 verse 15 in Jeremiah says, which made their misery the more terrible to them. The true prophet escaped those judgments, which were going to escape the judgments that are to come, which he said would come and that made his escape the more comfortable to him. The same that were the instruments of punishing the persecutors were the instruments of relieving the persecuted. Woo. And Jeremiah thought never the worse of his deliverance for it's coming by the hand of the king of Babylon, but saw the more of the hand of Yahweh by Shemel Shai in it. Now with that, let's read Wisdom of Solomon 10 of the power of wisdom, that spirit, that protecting and loving spirit that the Lord sends from his throne, that spirit which uh, uh, embodies Mashiach, which embodies Yahweh Shai is the spirit of wisdom that saved all our forefathers in the ancient times from very great cataclysmic events. Let's read. It says, but when the unrighteous went away from her in his wrath, Cain, which that same spirit is in Esau, he doesn't have wisdom and he will never have it. He's carnal. Wisdom will flee a malicious soul. Wisdom will not enter. It says, but when the unrighteous went away from her in his anger, Cain, he perished also in the fury wherewith he murdered his brother, Abel. All right. Verse four, for whose cause the earth being drowned with the flood, which is Cain and his descendants, and even made the sons of God to fall. All right. It says, wisdom again preserved it and directed the course of the righteous in a piece of wood, which is the, the ark of small value. Now that piece of wood that people consider of small value is even the cross that Mashiach bared and his blood, his precious blood that spilt upon that cross. And through that blood, we have remission of sins, which the wages of sin is death. And through the blood of Mashiach, are we freed from so great a transgression and so great a death? And as, as a piece of wood, a small value to most in this time, because uh, uh, by the foolishness of preaching, we save them that believe. For them that believe will be saved. All right. Moreover, verse five, the nations in their wicked conspiracies during the time of uh, Nimrod being confounded. She found out the righteous 
He preserved him blameless unto Yahweh. All right, going all the way down to the time of uh, Abraham, our forefather, unto Yahweh and kept his and kept him strong against his tender mercy, his tender compassion toward his son. That's Abraham. Let's read it again. Moreover, the nations and their wicked conspiracies being confounded, going to the Tower of Babel. She found out the righteous, that line, followed that line from through her facts at Eber, Peleg all the way down to uh, Abraham or Abram at the time, this, whose name was changed to Abraham. OK, and kept and preserved him blameless unto Yahweh and kept him strong against his tender compassion toward his son, which is Isaac, his only begotten, though he had other sons, Ishmael, the six sons of Keturah. But that was the son of promise, Isaac, and he was willing to sacrifice him and deliver him up to the Lord. But then through that, the Lord knew, OK, this man, this my friend trusts in me and I will be a friend unto him and be a merciful and uh, a grace giving power unto his seed after him, his posterity. <clears throat> I will be the saving grace of his posterity, even the remnant that are called in these latter days. Verse six, when the ungodly perished, she delivered the righteous man who fled from the fire, which was a lot, which fell down upon the five cities, Sodom, Gomorrah, uh, uh, Zeboim, Zoar, and uh, forget the other city, uh, Akba or something like that. You know, those five cities were destroyed for their wickedness and evil. But you see how wisdom again preserved the righteous. All right, delivered the righteous man. That same spirit. And that same spirit is going to deliver us. The same spirit that delivered Jeremiah. It's the same spirit that delivered the three holy sons. The same spirit that delivered Daniel in the lion's den. The same spirit that delivered David from all his trials. The same spirit that delivered Peter out of the prison. It's the same spirit that has power over all spirits to do what. <clears throat> His will is, whether it be for good or ill, but in this sense, good for his elect. Of whose wickedness, even to this day, the wasteland that smoketh is a testimony and plants bearing fruit that never come to ripeness. And a standing pillar of salt is a monument of an unbelieving soul. You don't want that evil heart of unbelief as Lot's wife was. Remember Lot's wife. Okay, we have to remember the saving grace of Yahweh Bashimah Shai. Many people that thought like Lot's wife got the little juicy juice and are either in the spirit realm or through. Frozen in time, bugged out. Because you had an unbelieving heart of disbelief and as wicked as evil. You were like Zedekiah of old. All right, and you got caught up and were destroyed and put into captivity with no eyes. Had your eyes plucked out. The last thing he seen was his sons die before his eyes. And then he had his eyes plucked out, taken into Babylon and died in captivity. That's where a lot of our people are going to find themselves. Two thirds are going to die in captivity. And though Zedekiah was literally physically blinded, our people are going to be uh, spiritually blind. And they're going to see their children dash before their eyes. You men, your women are ravished before you. And then you're going to be taken into captivity. And you're going to die in captivity, die in this pit. You're going to die in this system that Esau Edom is bringing upon the world. But the elect that are in the prison with you in this prison, this, this digital sale will be loosed and freed by Yahweh Bashem El Shai, as Jeremiah was. Verse 8, For regarding not wisdom, they got not only this hurt, that they knew not the things which were good, but also left behind them the, to the world a memorial of their foolishness. So that in the things wherein they are offended, they could not so much as be hid. See? But wisdom delivered from pain those that attended upon her. See? So we, we could be in pain, but wisdom is going to deliver us from the pain that we shall find ourselves in or would have found ourselves in like everybody else in these times that are coming. It says, when the righteous fled from his brother's wrath, going into Jacob, our forefather, she guided him in right paths, showed him the kingdom of Yahweh through uh, what they call Jacob's ladder, and gave him knowledge of holy things, made him rich in his travels when he went to go work for Laban, his uncle, 
his mother's brother. It multiplied the fruit of his labors. He, uh, his wives, he had, uh, he worked for Rachel, but got Leah worked another seven years for Rachel, but then got Leah's, uh, 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 um, servant girl and got Rachel's servant girl as well and bear the 12 tribes. Okay. And then he had the labors. He, he worked for his, his cattle and his servants and things of that nature and got even more servants through, through time. It says, multiply the fruit of his labors. Verse 11, in covetedness of such as oppressed him, which was Laban, she stood by him and made him rich. Verse 12, she defended him from his enemies going into Esau, his brother coming with 400 armed men to kill him because he believed that he stole the birthright and all these other things when really he sold it away. And then for one morsel of meat, he uh, sold his birthright and didn't, didn't think nothing of it, thought it was nothing. It says, she defended him from his enemies and kept him safe from those that lay in wait and in sore conflict going into his fight with the angel, having his name changed from Jacob to Israel, Yahshua Allah, he prince of the power. It says, and in, and in a sore conflict, she gave him the victory because uh, it was a sore conflict because uh, Jacob's hip was put out of a joint, out of place by the angel, but he still did not let go of the angel until he was blessed. That's when his name was changed, that he might know that goodness I remember uh, in my, my book, 1611, says godliness. But godliness is goodness. It's stronger than all. So we got to understand that godliness or goodness is stronger than all. It says, when the righteous was sold, she forsook him not going into Joseph, but delivered him from sin. All right, uh, sleeping with Potiphar's wife, uh, his master at the time, which was the captain of the guard to Pharaoh. She went down with him going into wisdom, that spirit. As, as a woman, because the, the glory of man is his woman. A woman is a help meet. A woman is a, a support. A woman is lovely. A woman is beautiful. All right. Same as wisdom. Wisdom is lovely, beautiful, a help, a support. All right. A thing placed with man. The glory of man really is truly wisdom. Though we know the glory of man is a woman. That's why wisdom is compared to such. Because no man can have nothing more profitable in his life than the wisdom. That the Lord gives. And through that you get everything. Just ask Solomon. It says. And when the righteous was sold. She forsook him not. But delivered him from sin. She went down with him into the pit. The pit that he was thrown in. Before he went into slavery. Then into the prison. Which was another pit. And took him out of there. And left him not in bonds and slavery. Till she brought him the scepter of the kingdom. Egypt. Alright. Mizraim. And power against those that oppressed him, his brothers, and those that had him in slavery, Potiphar, his woman, the Egyptians themselves, those that threw him in the prison, those that were over him in the prison. It says, as for them that had accused him, she showed them to be liars. Okay, his brothers had to come to a conclusion like, damn, everything we did was wrong, but not knowing that it was the power of the Lord, and gave him perpetual glory. <laughs> He's the ruler of the world. Pharaoh only said, oh, only because of the throne will I be greater than thou. But really, Joseph had power over all the, the Egyptians, Mizraim, and all the people of all the surrounding lands that came up. He was the Lord of the land. Okay. It says, she delivered the righteous people and blameless seed from the nation that oppressed him, Mizraim, during the time of Moses. She entered into the soul of the servant of the Lord, Yahweh, by Shemal Shai, which is Moses, and withstood Dreadful kings and wonders and signs going into Moses. Render to the righteous a reward of their labors. Our people being there for 400 years, serving hard bondage and captivity. Guided them in a marvelous way, leading us out of Egypt with the cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. The chariot, which was driven by the angel of the Lord's presence, even Yahweh Shai, and was unto them for a cover by day and a light of stars in the night season. Brought them through the Red Sea and led them through much water. That was our baptism, as Paul stated in Corinthians 10. All right, it says, but she drowned their enemies, the Egyptian Pharaoh and his army, and cast them up out of the bottom of the deep. Therefore, the righteous spoiled the ungodly. That's what happened before we left. 
All right. And praise thy holy name. All right. O Lord, Yahweh Bashamel Shai, and magnified with one accord thine hand that fought for them. For wisdom opened the mouth of the dumb, those that cannot speak, and made the tongue of them that cannot speak eloquent. And that's what the Lord does for his prophets. That's what he did for Jeremiah. Even though the king and his princes did not like Jeremiah's words and they cast him into the prison, the words were received, the words were fulfilled, and the words reached even the ear of King Nebuchadnezzar. And he knew, go free the prophet Jeremiah, who prophesied of our coming. You see? And that's how Jeremiah was freed. All right, now let me read uh, through this commentary and uh, I'm going to close out. All right, now let me get another scripture. Um, second address. We're going to leave it at that. And once I'm done with the commentary, we're going to go over those scriptures of the captive in the uh, modern translation, and then that'll be it. And Lord's willingness was edifying. Now let's go to second address 2. We're going to start at 26. But let's read this commentary. Up top, it says, The true prophet escaped those judgments which he said would come, and that made his escape the more comfortable to him. The same that were the instruments of punishing the persecutors were the instruments of relieving the persecuted. And Jeremiah thought never the worse of his deliverance for its coming by the hand of the king of Babylon, but saw the more of the hand of Yahweh by Shemelshah in it. A fuller account of this matter we shall meet with in the next chapter, which yeah, chapter um, 40 goes in, you know, it goes a little deeper into it. Bullet point two, all right, well, the Roman numerals. A gracious message to Ibed Melech, which is Ibad Malak, which is a servant of the king, but he's the servant of the of the true king, not Zedekiah, who was a, a damn uh, puppet king set up by Nebuchadnezzar, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, hey, we're looking to the true king, the king of kings, in whom he have set up, not men that have set themselves up. All right. Now it says, a gracious message to Ibad Malak, servant of the king, to assure him of a recompense payback for his kindness to Jeremiah. This message was sent to him by Jeremiah himself, who, when he returned him, thanks for his kindness to him, thus turned him over to God to be his paymaster. He relieved a prophet in the name of a prophet, and thus he had a prophet's reward. This message was delivered to him immediately after he had done that kindness to Jeremiah, but it is mentioned here after the taking of the city to show that as Yahweh Bashem al was kind to Jeremiah at that time, so he was to Ibad Malak for his sake. And it was a token of special favor to both, and they ought to, uh, Salaki, and they ought so to account it. That they were not involved in any of the common calamities. Jeremiah is di directed to tell him, Bullet point one, that Yahweh would certainly bring upon Jerusalem the ruin that had been long and often threatened. And for his further satisfaction, in having been kind to Jeremiah, he should see him abundantly proved a true prophet. Verse 16, and we're going to be tr uh, proved true prophets, beginning with our apostles and elders on down. All right, this is the enemies were men of whom he was afraid. Note, so like you, let me read uh, bullet point two, that Yahweh took notice of the fear he had of the judgments coming. Though he was bravely bold in the service of Yahweh, yet he was afraid of the rod of Yahweh by Shemel Shai. The enemies were men of whom he was afraid. Note, Yahweh by Shemel Shai knows how to adapt and accommodate his comforts to the fears and griefs of his people. But he knows their souls in adversity. <whistles> Verse 3. That he shall be delivered from having a share in the common calamity. I will deliver thee. I will surely deliver thee. He had been instrumental to deliver Yahweh's prophet out of the dungeon. Now Yahweh promises to deliver him. For he will be behind hand. With none for any service they do directly or indirectly. For his name Thou hast saved Jeremiah's life. 
that was precious to thee, and therefore thy life shall be given thee for a prey. Verse 4. The reason given for this distinguishing favor which Yahweh Bashem Shai had in store for him is because thou hast put thy trust in me, saith the Lord Yahweh Bashem Shai, power in recompensing men's services, has an eye to the principle they go upon in those services, and rewards according to those principles. And there is no principle of obedience that will be more acceptable to Yahweh, nor have a greater influence upon us than a believing confidence in Yahweh. By Shem Yahweh Shai, Ibad Malak trusted in Yahweh that he would own him and stand by him. And then he was not afraid of the face of man. And those who trust Yahweh, by Shem Yahweh Shai, as this good man did, in the way of duty, will find that their hope shall not make them ashamed in times of the greatest danger. Woo! And that's what we have to look forward to, brothers. And you believers out there, we have nothing to fear. But the fear of Yahweh by Shemal Shai drive the way. All right? Uh, 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 sins. All right? It says, uh, Perfect love, our perfect love toward Yahweh Bashem Hashai casteth away fear. How about that? Okay, now let me get uh, captive. We're going to get those in the modern translation and we're going to close out with these scriptures here. All right, and Lord's willing, this has been edifying to you, believers and listeners. Okay, got that. Cool. All right. We're going to bring those two out. We'll read this in 2nd Edges 2 and 26. As for the servants whom I have given thee, there shall not one of them perish, the elect. But I will require them from among thy number. Be not weary, for in the day of trouble and heaviness cometh, others shall weep and be sorrowful. But thou shalt be merry and have abundance in the time of perplexity, a time of scarcity, a time of not knowing which way to turn. For many people, we shall have an abundance. We shall not be weary or in heaviness because the Lord is going to be our guide, our power, our help, our support, our strong stay in the day of trouble. It says the heathen, whether it be the actual heathen or our people that have chose the way of the heathen, as if that was the better way, they're going to envy those that have trusted in the Lord but shall be able to do nothing about it. Because they are on one side and we're on the other. A line has been drawn in the sand. It says the heathen shall envy thee, but they shall be able to do nothing against thee. Saith the Lord, Yahweh, by Shemal Shai, my hand shall cover thee, so that thy children shall not see hell, the grave. When, when we're going to see many children dashed to pieces and destroyed and slain and killed, our children, yet to be born, of unborn, and even those children that we have here and now, and whatever stage they may be, they will not see the grave because we trust in the Lord. Just like Ibad Malak got the same uh, uh, gracious blessings that Jeremiah got of being freed and being taken care of. Our children, our women, those that believe, those that have helped us will get the same blessings that we as the men of the Lord, prophets, teachers, evangelists, OK, apostles. Get our families and those that believe among the elect will get the same. It says, be joyful, thou mother, going into our women that are going to bear children and be saved by it and remain faithful. OK, We're going to see the salvation because the works that were put in and the faith that was shown. They're going to be joyful. Be joyful, thou mother, with thy children, for I will deliver thee. Saith the Lord, Yahweh, Bashem al Shai. Even though we may be separated from our women at that time, they're going to be delivered. That, that's, the, that's the proof right there. We just read it. It says, Remember thy children that sleep. Right, we, uh, those of our, our people that have died, but they're a part of the elect. They're in the spirit realm right now. We remember them that sleep, that are dead. For I shall bring them out of the sides of the earth 
whether they be spiritually dead and haven't been awoken to the truth, because many are going to come in the 11th hour, or they be actually dead, dying in the service of the Lord. They're going to be risen in his day, for the Lord is the resurrection. All right, it says, and show mercy unto them, for I am merciful, saith the Lord, Yahweh, Bashim Shai, <laughs> Almighty. Woo, but is it, hey, do you see how the Lord said, for I am merciful, hey, his saving grace, for I am merciful, saith the Lord Almighty. Embrace thy children until I come, going into the elect, and show mercy unto them, because the mercy that was shown us, we show unto them. The truth that we freely got, we freely give. Okay? It says, for my wells run over, going into this truth, being running living waters, and my grace sh woo, shall not fail. Woo-hoo-hoo! Woo! Barakatai Yahweh, Bashim al Shah for that. Wasn't even expecting that, but there you go. That's how you know it's the Spirit. Called it saving grace, and then at the end, and my grace shall not fail. There it is. Now, this is uh, Isaiah 49 21 NLT. Then you will think to yourselves, Who has given me all these? Is that the, is that the right one? Hold on. Not nah, ain't it. What is the one I wanted? Um, bear with me, brothers. Hold on. Character. What's my children? Okay, I think it's the next screen. Bear with me, brothers. Hold on. But that one too. I might I might actually just go go ahead along with that one. But um there's another one I want to get. Okay, that was 21. This is 24. Okay, let's go there. There we go. This is Isaiah 49, 24. Who can snatch the plunder of war from the hands of a warrior? Who can demand a tyrant let his captives go? Verse 25. But the Lord Yahweh, Bashimashai, says the captives of warriors will be released and the plunder of tyrants will be retrieved. I will fight for those who fight, uh, for I will fight those so like you, who fight you, and I will save your children. <laughs> Man, you see that? Call all Yimla, Yah Bashimashai. <laughs> Damn. I will feed your enemies with their own flesh and they will be drunk with rivers of their own blood. All the world will know that I, the Lord Yahweh, Bashim Ashai, am your savior and your redeemer, the mighty one of Israel. <whistles> so with that, man, hang on to Yahweh Bashim Ashai's unchanging hand. Believe in him. Trust in him, hope in him, understand him, and know his saving grace. And believe his prophets, and thou shalt prosper. And with that, giving all praises, glory, and honor unto Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh Shai, Bashim Rakakadash, by whom we do function. Double honors unto my apostles, my elders, and my teachers at Great Millstone that are ruling well and continue to do so. Salutations, peace, and blessings unto the hopeful elected house. David, to your brothers out there fighting this good fight of faith, keep it up. To your sisters doing that which is becoming of women, shalom. And to those that are addicted unto this ministry, I say shalom. On to the next one. Those when you have been edified. Until the next time, I say shalom. Shalom, brothers and you believers. Shalom. On to the next one. Shalom.